So good morning, everybody, and welcome. It's Sunday morning here in London on a glorious sunny day. So sunny, in fact, that the sunlight is streaming across my computer camera and leaving me in some kind of hazy glow. Uh, for those of you who can see, and it's Lizzie and Justin from Third Space, and we're here live again for another week and another step in this long conversation that um, the two of us and many of you have been in. And I just want to say welcome to all of you and to all of us to those of you, the many of you who've been with us for weeks and weeks and months and months, and those of you who are just joining us today for the first time, you're all so welcome to join with us in this live and unrehearsed and as real as we can be conversation. And I'm so looking forward to talking about this source that you've chosen for us, Lizzie, this morning. Mm. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being with us. However you're being with us, whether it's here live on Facebook or maybe you're listening on the podcast on Spotify or Apple or wherever, it's a real joy to know that you are here. And I had a, a message just Justin yesterday on WhatsApp from a client who I worked with well over a year ago now saying, I like your hair. And I thought, oh gosh, what? You know what's what's happened have a, is there a picture of me online or something or whatever so then anyway i figured out that it was somebody who i knew because their number didn't happen to be on my phone because i changed phones and then he explained that he'd been watching turning towards life and he was telling me that he was just about to have a baby and it was just a really nice little catch up on whatsapp and it made me feel into just how many people are listening that i don't know about until i know about it and it's so moving to know that even when I finish working with people or before I've even worked with people or you have or whatever, it's like people have a way of being with us and listening and continuing the conversation. And I just feel really glad that, that this resource is there and this process is there for us to be in ourselves, but also share with everybody. It's really wonderful. So welcome everybody. And this week we have this wonderful piece of writing by Donna Lancaster. So Donna, is somebody that I have been introduced to from, through a film called Loved, which I highly recommend everybody watches. So it's love and then bracket D and then close bracket. And it, I saw it on Amazon Prime. And somebody who did our PCC a number of years ago, the professional coaching course, her partner wrote the treatment, I guess, and directed this film. And the film is made about something called The Bridge Retreat, which Donna and a friend of hers, whose name I can't currently remember, run together. And it's about an hour long, this film. And me and Matthew, my husband, sat and cried our way through it. And it's a very beautiful process that they run. And I would very much recommend that everybody watches it. And this particular reading felt like it was a very pertinent, relevant calling as to how come we do that kind of work that's done at the Bridge Retreat, which I've historically done a lot of before becoming more involved in this integral work, Justin. And I know you've done a lot of it as well. So it's, it's a lot of constellations and kind of retroactive healing work. So going back into our past and finding places in ourselves that need holding and loving and bringing them to the light and bringing them to touch and bringing them to holding. So I was so moved by watching Donna and her team bring some people through this process. And I actually just heard she's running a process online for the first time ever because of lockdown as well. So that's a real gift to people. So if you want to find anything more about Donna, you can look at the bridge retreat on Google and I think it will come up and you can read more about her and her work. But for now, this piece of writing that has come through her, and I've heard that really Donna just listens. And when she listens, these words come. And this particular piece of her writing, I was looking for something to point us to the love documentary because I just feel like it's such a gift to watch it and to feel it. And then when I came across this, I knew this was the kind of right feeling, the right depth that would invite us into the conversation. 
And this piece of Donna's writing is called The Gift of Sadness. So here we go. Sometimes sadness arrives as a messenger to remind you of all the changes you still need to make in your life, of all the risks you need to take but have been too afraid to. It creeps through you, this sadness, offering up its painful gifts, whispering truths that you do not wish to see or hear. Thank you very much. But sooner or later, sadness will demand your full attention, making it too painful for you to try and stay asleep. It's so generous like that. Until finally one day you have no choice but to take a deep breath, get up from your knees and begin. To start facing the lies you've been telling and hiding behind and feeling the heartbreaks and hurts you've been running from. To begin making new painful yet necessary choices for, your ch for change in your life. Those that will make the difference between you existing or living. Now, whispers sadness, wake up, the time is now. So you take that first wobbly step into the unknown and then from there you take the next one. Sometimes deep sadness is the universe calling your name. Listen. So I'll read it too. And maybe if you're listening, if you didn't get to do this yet, just let yourself pause so you can hear this. And maybe do whatever you can to uh, make yourself really soft so that Donna's words can find a way in. Sometimes sadness arrives as a messenger to remind you of all the changes you still need to make in your life, of all the risks you need to take but have been too afraid to. It creeps through you, this sadness, offering up its painful gifts, whispering truths that you do not wish to see or hear. Thank you very much. But sooner or later, sadness will demand your full attention, making it too painful for you to try and stay asleep. It's so generous like that. Until finally one day, you have no choice but to take a deep breath, get up from your knees and begin. To start facing the lies you've been telling and hiding behind and feeling the heartbreaks and hurts you've been running from. To begin making new painful yet necessary choices for change in your life. Those that will make the difference between you existing or living. Now, whispers sadness, wake up. The time is now. So you take that first wobbly step into the unknown and from there you take the next one. Sometimes deep sadness is the universe calling your name. Listen. So Justin, as you were reading, I found myself kind of reviewing my life somehow. And that line at the end really struck me where I can really feel that the universe has called my name through sadness and through many other things too. But some very deep openings have arrived through feeling really, really sad prolongedly sad and at the time when it's happening to me the sadness it feels huge and so of course there's all ways that I would avoid that sadness but to listen to it as the universe calling my name feels so true it feels like of course, they were the biggest openings. They are the biggest openings. They will be the biggest openings. And the one that, that pops into my head is that I remember really early on when I was walking through Soho, probably when you were walking through Soho, Justin, <laughs> uh, 
and I was only like in my early 20s and I remember stopping I think I was on the corner of Wardour Street and Broadwick Street and I remember stopping and just bursting into tears and sobbing because I realized that I couldn't remember anything about the good things that had happened to me in my life that I had skated over everything so superficially that the things that were desperately sacred to me that I loved people who I loved I couldn't remember the things that I had done with them I couldn't remember occasions that were meaningful to me I knew they had happened but I had no substantial memory that would connect me back to them other than the fact that they had happened and I remember just being cracked wide open and this deep well of sadness broke open and that was like the story of the opening in a way but of course then the journey that got invited and how the universe called my name to take a journey went to all kinds of places of course it might have been about my memories and things but actually it was much deeper awakening of just how not present I was in my life just how unaware I was just how unempathetic I was unfeeling uh, I would say like I was living in like a very very narrow part of myself at the time and this sadness came and found me thank goodness and it's so funny how I have a kind of geographical memory of these times but often when I have these awakenings the geography of it really matters somehow like not that I consciously think I have to remember where I was when this happened but it, it just sticks to me and so I really remember that moment and thankfully there were people to help me through to know that this was an opening rather than I had to just lie down in my bed for 20 years or something because that could have also happened but I happened to be in an environment where there were people who knew what that meant and who could say to me, this is the universe calling your name. And I'm so grateful that Donna is a person like that, who can write something like this, who can heal, do the healing work that she does. So that for those of us who do collapse under the weight of having not been present or having abused ourselves in some way or being abused or being in situations that are so heavy that we can't hold them on our own anymore. There are people who can receive us and work with us. And I know that because I've seen this film that Donna's done and felt the healing for my own self. And that's the thing about the film. It's not like an advert for a program or something. It's, a, it's when we get into this kind of, these universal themes of healing, it can't help but also be about us. So those brave people in the documentary film were also me. And so, of course, their calling of sadness that took them there was also mine and everybody else's. And it made it so available to feel what there is to feel because we're human and we've all had the stories and the childhoods that we've had and the abandonments we've had and the wounds that we've had and the crises and the, the splits and the cracking and the foundations being rocked and the not knowing and the frighteningness and the worry and all those things and the trauma and the fact that there is a, a place that that all gets received and that the, the messenger that connects us might be sadness like what a different narrative that is than oh dear you're sad that's you just kind of written off for life or something so I feel really hopeful about the narrative we can have around sadness that invites us into a calling of some kind mm. I find myself really moved Lizzie by your account of having deep sadness find its way to you on a street corner in London Soho and it's a well it's a way to know you in a new way by hearing the story which I haven't heard before but it's also a reminder for me that 
sadness, like all emotion, like in, in a way, the simple thing to say about all of what we get to feel is that it's really a call to what we care about. And we wouldn't, the alternative to this, I was trying to imagine the alternative world as you were talking about it, in which, which I also know myself, in which we try and keep ourselves away from intense feeling, particularly ones that we deem to be unwelcome. And we, you talked about living in a very narrow band. And I can think of, and you know, of course, sometimes it still happens too, but I can think of long periods of my life where I, when I look back, I could feel myself, it's almost like um, getting my hands and pushing down, just actively spending my life pushing down everything I really didn't want to feel. And sadness is a really big one for me of not, not feeling. That the, that the consequence of making that move in our lives is to cut ourselves off from what really matters to us, from what we re really care about, from what we long for. Because sadness, just as a beginning way of talking about it, it seems to me that sadness is, we feel sadness when we get in contact with all that might have been, that wasn't. Mm -hmm. And everything that was that we longed for and loved that has been lost mm. and all the hopes that we've been hoping for that we can't yet find a way of fulfilling and all the mistakes that we've made that we don't know how to redeem and anyway could go on with a giant list but the the point is is that every single one of them points into something that really really deeply matters to us and that's why i i love this whole piece by donna but the the part that touched me so much when you read it and then when I read it too is the line right in the middle where Donna writes it's so sadness is so generous mm -hmm. so generous like that mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. if we'll let ourselves feel it and let ourselves walk through its passage mm -hmm. then it can start to call us into this really um foundational choice that we have again and again and again every every breath and every moment there's a choice to be made will i will i live in this moment or will i not you know will i mm -hmm. attend to life here or will i somehow try and keep avoiding it and and in a way that's the fundamental choice that we just keep on making in every moment and every moment and i suppose the thing i've also found with sadness like you have lizzie is that there's there's a certain amount by which we can hold it at bay but if we're lucky at some point, the cost of holding it at bay gets, gets too un, unsustainable. It gets too much. And then our yeah. sadness starts to either creep in or flood in. Mm. And that's the moment to uh, let ourselves shake with it. Mm. And I haven't seen the documentary yet. But of course, I know from the work that we do and from our conversations that there's such a difference between treating sadness as something to get over. If, mm. if you're sad to say to you, I can see that you're sad and you'll soon be done with it. Let's try and cover it over or lift you out or to say, um, maybe this is the universe calling you specifically, Lizzie, mm. or calling me specifically. And I suppose that what sadness brings us is a question. Like we in a way what happens with sadness is we get we get called into question and the question might be something the lines of can you now see what you really love mm. or what is it that you really love and then the second question i suppose it calls us into is and how will you live now not in a way that covers me over but in a way that honors me and gives me a place mm. and has you in contact with what's mm. um what's most significant yeah so i noticed that when you said and then we can begin to shake with it that we can begin to shake with sadness i can remember my goodness, the times in my life where, where my body has shaken with sadness and how huge an experience it is to feel that sad. And I was loving all of your examples of questions that, or callings that it might be bringing to us. And I was also remembering times where 
I have no idea what's happening and I'm shaking with sadness and I'm crying and I don't understand and I don't know what it's for and it feels too big and I can't handle it and there's no story to it and I'm not sure if it's mine and I feel really met by what the invitation might be that doesn't even have a story to it either anyway that I can identify like that there might be a kind of depth of sadness that's arising that's an invitation to parts of myself that I don't know yet that I haven't encountered but that I can in this narrative anyway I can trust that I can trust that I haven't got a clue what I'm supposed to do what's here what's going on I feel like I'm in a tumble dryer or something and I'm all over the place and yet I think this piece of writing is calling us to faith faith in the unfolding of life faith that there are people who can be with us in this faith that what is happening to me has a purpose like if I feel like this sadness is upon me is with me a lot that there is a way that I can work with it. Like it's not some cross I have to bear or something, but there's a path that is being invited for examination, for delving into, for being conscious around with other people that can lead me home in some way. And that feels really exciting. And I think that's what the gift for me of watching the documentary felt like too was oh so there's a comprehensive way that I can be held and worked with when this kind of sadness hits and I have no idea what to do and Justin in our work we would call this an opening you know sadness is a huge opening into an opportunity to deepen to look at the story story that we're holding to look at other stories we also might hold and it feels like I'm no longer like an exile or something to be feeling something that I look out my window and oh no not everyone's crying not everybody's collapsed on their bed and doesn't know what to do with themselves therefore there must be something wrong with me looking at that and going okay so that's one story but it doesn't feel like a helpful story. It doesn't help me move through. It just keeps me kind of coming back to the same place again by comparing myself and thinking there's something wrong with me. And then this story comes along and I might reach out. I might just have it as an inkling that it might be a gift. And if I would let it be a gift, what action does that have me take? Maybe I could call somebody. Maybe I could look up Donna. Maybe I could find someone to work with. Maybe I could call someone. Maybe I could share a friend with a friend what's happening. If, if really this sadness is the universe calling my name, it invites me to act so differently than there's something wrong with me. And therefore I have to hide this part of myself. I have to be ashamed. I have to not show this to anybody all of those things that I think culturally has really been slapped upon us in lots of ways. And this is an invitation out of that. And it feels so important to be saying this, like maybe some of us really need to hear this right now and not just stick with the story that we've been handed in the soup of our culture, but to question it and to look more deeply into this story, which is that, the sadness is the universe calling my name. I love that you're drawing attention, Lizzie, to the <clears throat> the mystery of it. You know, I I was talking about questions it might ask us, and then you said, <clears throat> "Yeah, but you may not even know what the sadness is or what it's asking. It may be completely mysterious." And that that seems really very true to me. <clears throat> and what you were saying about shame in our culture. So it might sound simplistic, but so often I, I come back to, I think that our culture 
that many of us live in has got itself twisted up in the question of what will um what we value is what will either sell things or have us be productive yeah and the trouble with sadness is <clears throat> it doesn't sell stuff and it doesn't have us be productive necessarily i mean it doesn't and so it it goes on to that pile of experiences that our wider culture deems as to be fixed or to be avoided yeah. at such giant cost to us and in a way i was thinking this earlier when you were talking about the blessing and i'm sure the very difficult painful blessing of being found by sadness in your 20s on the street in in central london um there's a there's a giant suffering that comes to us in our lives in fact an 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 un necessary suffering that comes in our lives from not being prepared and not feeling able and not feeling welcome to and not feeling allowed to have sadness find its way with us and that's why it's so important Lizzie what you're saying that this Donna's mm. writing and her work and our conversation might be an invitation for us and for anyone to start to feel the possibility that our sadness is you know, even our sadness that we haven't yet felt our sadness because mm. has its proper place. And I was thinking about um, the image that came to me whilst you were talking was I was watering some plants in the garden yesterday because it's been very hot. And I was I was thinking about um, sadness can be such a like it can be like being um, watered if we'll let us mm. so like mm. like. Um, having our deep thirst met and living trying not to feel it is like trying to trying to grow as a you no know, like in the arid conditions and wondering why it's so hard to grow is because we haven't yet let ourselves be drenched by this call that donna talks about that the universe is bringing us and i i think that sadness and love are inextricably connected to one another are Mm -hmm. Our sadness is our love and our love is our sadness as well as our joy and all of those kind of things. And this, so where I got to what was awakening me whilst you were talking, Lizzie, was um, another way of talking about this. When we talk about sometimes deep sadness is the universe calling your name, is to also see that the universe is not just calling your name, it's calling all of us. That there's my sadness, but there's also the sadness. Yeah of being a living, feeling, caring being. And then when I can see that it's the sadness, it starts also to open the possibilities, A, that I don't have to feel so ashamed about it. Mm -hmm. But B, when I am filled and flowing with sadness, you might meet me knowing that the sadness is yours too. Yeah. You don't have to run from it either. You don't have to make me better. You don't have to push me away. You can accompany me on the path that, as Donna says, we're all going to walk. Yes. You know, sooner or later, <laughs> and I really agree with Donna's words, is sooner or later, sadness will demand us. Yeah. So, what would it be to commit to walking with one another when we find ourselves met yeah. by it? What a gift that can be to one another. And we, and mm. There's a way in which we can all be this. We can we can get ourselves into the hands and places of communities and people who know this path really well. But there's also a way that we can practice being the ones who, when the people who are around us find themselves in sadness, we stay. We don't yes. run and we let ourselves feel exactly what it's like to be with them. And we yes. welcome we welcome the exiles, what would otherwise be exiled. We welcome we participate in welcoming the exiles home. Of course, just I feel so, uh, what's the word, like, opened when you said there's our sadness, but there's also the sadness. I'm not sure I know how to say this, uh, but as you said that, I could feel that when I'm encountering the sadness, I don't have to identify with it so much either. So I know the times when that feeling has felt like it is mine and I feel crippled by it. 
I'm twisted by it and it really hurts as well. My body always hurts when I feel like that kind of sadness. And when you said the sadness, it really helped me to see that the sadness can be here, but it isn't all of who I am. It's a part of who I am. And there's a mistake that can be made of over identifying with whatever it is that I'm feeling, that any of us are feeling. So that it feels like we are kind of out, like in a way, in a way like out of integrity with the integrity. <laughs> you know, when I come to you and I say I feel sad, you're human. And so this will be part of your experience of being a human to feel sad. I don't think I've ever met a human being that hasn't felt sad. Like we all know what it feels like to feel sad. So there is a universality about sadness. Of the, that you're calling the sadness and when it's the sadness it becomes like in my experience like a like the gift that it is so it's not my cross to bear it's not me it's something that happens because i am me i can be sad i can be with sadness and to take the weight of identity off it by talking about it like that feels like it opens the horizons like I can hold it I think we've talked about this before Justin like having something here with me is really different than being dragged around by it unconsciously and somehow saying the sadness opens that space for me where I can say ah oh, I can feel in my in my body in my feeling body that it it can be with me and I can hold it because it's an it rather than it's me. And I feel really like a spaciousness open up so that I can have language that also helps me to have the sadness be in the place that I can work with it rather than being had by it, like being dragged by it. I always have this image of myself when things have me of like things dragging me by the hair backwards through a bush or something where I can't even see that the bush is coming, but it's all sharp and I, and I'm, and I'm completely unconscious and I'm in the kind of the panic and the experience of being had by something. And then when we settle and when we come to a clear spaciousness around what we're speaking about, the world opens up in a different way. Like I can see what it is. I can even watch myself being dragged through the hedge backwards by the thing and talk about it. And that feels really freeing and really like when the Christmas lights, you pull the right one and it just kind of loosens them a little bit. So you know that they're going to end up all right in the end, even if you are still in the ball and you can't really see how to untangle them. But that one thing that you pulled just gave you enough spaciousness to realize that the Christmas lights can come apart and you can then put them around the tree. It feels like that kind of uh, air gets breathed into the situation that we can talk about it and we can hold it here and we can be kind rather than just be in the pure reaction of it. So I'm really grateful for you saying the sadness. Well, I, I, um, I think the way you've brought us round to Lizzie is back into this central point that Donna makes, which is what if then we were, what would happen, what can happen if we learn to take that moment as a gift, not as something to run from. Yeah. If it's, if it's the sadness and not just our sadness, it's both, isn't it? Some of both. If when we, when we um, can let ourselves see that whatever it feels like, it's calling us into something for our lives. And we can turn from being had by it to having it almost like having it in our hands and mm. bringing it to others. That's, that's the deeply unfamiliar move for many of us, sometimes until we've sort of been forced Sometimes we can get forced that way in the end, mm -hmm. but how much kinder it would be 
to learn to feel sadness, deep sadness as an opening, as you said. And as, as a way that something way bigger than us is um, showing us or calling us or inviting us into our lives. Mm. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you, Justin. Thank you, Donna. Thank you everyone for being here for this conversation. It feels very settling to me and very opening and soft and important. And I'm grateful for everybody who's listening live with us and who comments on our Facebook page. If you ever want to come and join in with that, you can, if you're listening on the podcast. So this is live around nine o'clock on a Sunday morning and wonderful comments and conversations happen beneath the video. And Justin and I often go and see what they are once we finish so that we're not trying to concentrate on comments at the same time as talking to one another, but it's lovely to see that afterwards. So thank you if you've commented or said anything, it's really lovely for us to, to read the, the kind of thoughts and feelings that you're having as you're listening. And we will be back next week, Justin, with a source chosen by you. And just to say thank you again for everyone being here. And we love doing this. It's really wonderful. So we'll see you again next week on Sunday at nine o'clock. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye.